you get back down the ladder inside the digging device just as okay you get down inside the digging device and the doors close the cargo doors start to crank close and uh and then after the after the 10 minutes is up the digging device starts to move now before just before that happens does anybody have anything that they want to try or or whatever we were we were Chris and I able to find what we were looking for at all via rifling through what I forgot about that altogether um so here's here's what I'm gonna do um all right you guys come down here hang on where's Chris at where's his token there it is all right you guys come down here and there's these these two doors. Am I on the right layer? Okay, there's these two doors right here, and you do manage to get them open with the keys. Um, both of these rooms are absolutely filth ridden. Okay, it appears that there were at least a couple of shock troopers in here. Um, uh, there is food in various places. The uh, uh, the desks. Uh, have plates of stuff on them uh, and this is in both of these rooms now uh, you know what I should probably remove the doors so that you guys can actually get to it okay you know I tried to make this really cool and it just was it's it's okay we understand the intent yeah I'm glad you do because I'm beginning to wonder <laughs> why I did it um, so Anyway, you, you get into these rooms, the desks, like I was saying, are, uh, they have food and stuff on them, uh, there are bullets around, a bunch of cards, stuff like that, and Chris is in the chair again, uh, <laughs> um, so... There's not really anything in there to, to give you any clues about anything, except... Um, in this room over here, um, you find a bill of lading for goods, supplies, ammunition, and arms for this, uh, for this digging device, uh, things that you have not necessarily found, and at the bottom of that bill of lading, it's signed, uh, Professor... Sharif. Okay. Uh huh. So it so seems like some trees. scholar. So what? All right. It seems like some scholar signed for a bunch of supplies for this journey, mm -hmm. but I doubt that's what we're looking for. You, between you two, do an evidence analysis check real quick, please. Okay, both uh, of us. Okay. Yes. Uh, not together. Separately. Okay. Let me just add that to my uh, skill list quickly. Oh, well, uh, evidence analysis is also based on mind. So you're, okay, so right. you're unskilled, 14, that's not bad. And then Chris, okay, 13, that's not bad. Okay, so both of you kind of come to the realization at the same moment that... Um, you have not seen any truly high-ranking individuals. You, uh, for Chris and Peaches, you know that you saw Dr. Marlin's body out on top of the digging device. Okay, but you and and the the officer that you guys just greased in the in the right-hand map part of this map. Um, was probably the highest ranking individual you've seen so far. So these are all the goons. Oh, uh, did, uh, is it too late to bring Dr. Marlin's body in? Uh, yes, the doors are already starting to close. It's going to take a couple of minutes for him to close, but uh, you're not going to be able to drag his body in before then. Uh, do we see her come back in by the time... Uh... I'm assuming there's nothing else we could do. 
Actually, um, you do not. What? There are no windows in this uh, digging device. Ah, right. <laughs> Does anybody yeah. like to check? Yeah, because she's a bit depressed. She's going to sit there and cry for a bit and be a girl. Uh, I mean, uh, expression of emotions is something both people could feel. It's just that our society is very biased against men showing any kind of emotion whatsoever. But Thurban will try and comfort her anyway. Okay. She's like, she might put her down in the cargo hold. Mo, I found Mo, and he was dead. Sob, sob. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very convincing. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah, thanks. Hey, come on. She's a broken wreck. <laughs> Wait. Um, okay. I'm starting to get an idea of what happened. All right. Now, um, you guys get together and, and everything... Uh, uh, Seems like it's starting to work as it's supposed to, except for the simple fact that there is a bullet in that last um, uh, weird science control panel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so uh, what I need to do is I need to close that and get into this real quick. Um, so we're going to end... That scene, actually two scenes, scenes two and three, uh, I had to actually bump a scene in for you guys. Um, so let's see. All players shuffle their, shuffle their pools back into their hands. If you have a hand of less than four cards, uh, yep. I can get you out more cards. Yep, I, need, I, I need one here. I need a card. Actually, if it's a Nile Empire hard point, shouldn't we have five hand cards? Um, actually, I'm getting to that because we're, we're changing to the last scene of the act. And it's a scene that's supposed to go quickly, um, so just okay. bear with me. Okay, so we're ending the scene. Go ahead and turn in your Cosm cards for the Living Land. You'll be getting new Cosm cards. Uh, how do we turn these in? Just set them on the table and he'll pick them up. Yeah, you, okay. you lay them on the table, I delete them. Okay. So toss in the Cosm cards? Yep. If you've got a Cosm card, you need to go ahead and, and put it in there. I like that Primal Instincts card. That's a neat card. Mm. And it's got good artwork to it. Okay. Um, uh, who has... Okay, so Ginger needs two. Chris and Saban each need... Oh, no, I'm sorry. Ginger needs three. Because it is a uh, Nile Empire hard point. So let me get my Destiny deck out. Uh, deal three for Ginger. And then deal two each for Chris. And. G uh, Gamer X. It's almost like Racer X. Um, kind of, yeah. Huh? Kind of, yeah. Kind of, yeah. Okay. Nile Empire Cosm cards. So deal one each. And that is to Ginger, um, Chris, Thank you. and Gamer X. Uh, and deal. Okay, that should be those. Uh, mm -hmm. Now. Ooh, not nice. Uh huh. Okay, each player. Da, 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 da. Okay, now, if you have a card in your hand that you don't want, you can. Uh, Put it, let me know, put it out on the table, and I'll get a replacement for you. But only one. Uh, yeah, I got one. I don't need two second win cards. Okay. So hang on and a second. I don't need two of those either. Okay. So that's Ginger and uh, Josh. What about you, Chris? I'm good. Okay. So deal one each. Oh. And... Uh, 
There we go, and deal. Okay, so that's just square that away. That's it's the new scene. Okay, I'll move this up here just in case. The law ah. of inevitable return. Play to bring any deceased character immediately back to life. Where or how she appears is up to the GM. All Storm Knights gain two possibilities if this card is used to restore a villain. Who are we talking about? Uh, I, I was thinking hopefully Mo. if that's, if, if Andrew wants his character back, or was he wanting to switch? Andrew? Uh, uh, we, we, um, I'm, I'm fine with switching. You can hang on with that card. Okay. It, 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 it's, it's entirely up to you. You have your chance to uh, bring Mo back if you want. I got you. It, it, if I decide it, 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 at the last minute, I'll tell you, you can throw it out there anytime. And uh, I can try to come back. I thought, I thought you were bringing back the character as a Nile Empire character. I didn't think you were sacrificing that guy. There's a story behind it. Uh, he, okay. he 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 got he got his ass stomped dead like doing something he shouldn't have done. Uh, it was a no. Actually, <laughs> he should have done exactly what he did, but uh, but his 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 death was put in place as part of the story. Let's put it that way. Oh, okay. So, if you're comfortable with that, okay. I just want to make sure the character Andrew. I want to make sure you were cool with that too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm fine. I'm fine. All right. We still have one need in us left, wherever he is. All right, so carrying on. <laughs> Let me hide what? this and hide this, because uh, I don't need those out anymore. All right, so scene four. It's called Scrambled Eggs. Uh, let's see, having recovered the Fabergé egg and, uh, and taking care of the Nile Shock Troops, uh, and on a return trajectory to the Nile Empire with the digging device, you have time to take a look around. So, uh, I think it's only Chris that has science, isn't it? Uh, yeah. Okay, so Chris, do you want to take a look around? Uh, sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, anyway, I, it's actually, be, here's another. Go ahead. Uh, here's another question. I was wondering if I could cast Speak with Dead on the highest ranked sergeant and then use this Cosm card, Triumphant Boast. The villain must explain their scheme in some detail. If the villain isn't in charge, he explains who and what he knows of the master plan. Uh, okay. Um, sure. That would have been good to play on Marlin, but we left his body behind. Unfortunately, yeah. Which is now being ground under. Okay. Uh, so if that's... Go ahead. Uh, I was... So if I could cast Speak with Dead on the sergeant again, since it's a new scene, and then use that card on him. Now, wait a minute. I thought you had not tried to speak with Dead with him. Or on him. My understanding was that was the dude out, out the way west of the map. Yeah, yeah, that's that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, but I, I thought you guys had not done anything with that particular character. That was the man I cast Speak With Dead on, I thought. Uh, okay, all right. Uh, Could I cast that spell again? Yeah, I think it's a limited spell. Hang on. Uh, let's see. Speak with Dead is... Is that in the Isle book? Uh, no, it's in the core book. I think you said once per scene, and it's a new scene. So, hang on. I think you're probably right. Whew. Tonight's complicated. Magic. Let's see. Speak with Dead... A particular corpse may only be questioned once per scene. Okay, make sure you've got your question in order this time. Because <laughs> you get one shot. Okay. <laughs> okay, I think I've got the question in order, and I am going to do that in conjunction with the uh, Cosm card, I think. Okay, so go ahead. Lay down your Cosm card. Okay. 
uh, Cosm card Triumphant Boast. I'm putting that next to the corpse. Okay. Uh, let's see. Play one face to face with. Well. But are you really face to face with a villain? He's dead. Is that the good? Isn't in charge. He explains who is and I sure sure you can you can do that. Um, or do you think it would be uh, more prudent to do that later? Well, no, no. I think you're probably all right with this. It's really odd circumstances, though. Uh, okay. Villain must explain his scheme in some detail. Uh, he says, I don't have a scheme. I'm dead. Well, I think the quest the specific question I asked for this individual was, what is the purpose of this machine? To go to the living land and back to the Nile Empire. That's a good success, so he can't knowingly withhold information aside from not talking. Well, and I think... He can't lie to you, that's for sure. Right. Does the Cosm card compel any other answers out of him? It Must should at least tell his make him say who's in charge. Must explain his scheme in some detail. Yeah, he gets uh, one final dramatic evil monologue. What villain yeah. would come for that? It's yeah. His, it's his swan song. He would tell his life story, even if he were dead. He doesn't have yeah. a master plan. It all began well, then it should say when I was died. 12. <laughs> yeah, he, he would start to say it, talk about how he's, his aspirations to move up the uh, corporate ladder, as it were. Or at least it should say in who's in charge with this whole evil plan. Um, it says he has to explain that. That's not exactly the question that you asked, but you did ask... He says he's not in charge. Uh, you need to look for Professor Shreve. Professor Shreve. Isn't that the name of the individual on the uh, order form we saw? I believe it was. Yeah, yeah the, pur the purchase order. Yeah. So that's all the information I'm getting out of him, I take? That's it, because he is not the guy in charge. Well, it's worth it that we found another clue. Okay. My character has my character has gone to the dessert cart and rated it for chocolate ice cream, if any. <laughs> oh. and then has, right, did has you get found, that idea for the text I've been going around? What text? And then has a uh, uh, yeah, and then has uh, gone into the cleanest cabin. I think it's the one labeled Captain's Cabin. And is uh, going to have a bit of a lie down. Okay. Uh, after sampling some of this delicious ice cream treat and loving the hell out of it, Thuban comes to join her, uh, Sir Penny. I know we only just met, but I've studied enough about death to know that the concept of the afterlife does exist in the living land to some extent. So he is, I could say with some amount of authority, he is legitimately in a better place. Yes, yes, I'm sure he has gone with God or his goddess of choice. And, and I will say a prayer with him at my next Mass. Okay, I understand most of what he's done. Okay. So, um, you've got... It, there's a countdown timer in the main control room where uh, Chris's token is right now. Um, uh, and it counts down like three days, eight hours, and 16 minutes from the start. So you're going to be in this thing, but the machine starts rumbling along. Um, well, I'm going to get so dizzy in this chair by that time. Oh, you just <laughs> might. Um, the, the question is... What do you guys do during this time? Do you want to check out the controls of the digging device? Do you want to do you want to search? Do you want to eat until you can't eat no more until you puke? Do you want to mess with things in in you know what do you want to do? I feel like I'm going to look through whatever cargo these guys were transporting. 
Okay, it, it's as I explained it earlier, but you can ask specific, more specific questions about what's there if you like. But let me find out from Chris and, and Peaches. Chris? Got it. Chris? Uh, um, oh, I have nothing really big that I want to do. <laughs> Again, <laughs> my mind's just kind of also wanting to spin around in a chair right now, so... Yeah, well, my character is going to have a good mope, uh, and then, and then, uh, yeah, start touching buttons. Do not touch buttons. Careful with the button push. I stop you from touching buttons. Y'all will wind up in Australia or something. <laughs> okay. So, what do you guys want to do? What do we want to do? Mm -hmm. Over three days. <laughs> For three days. Oh. Is there any booze in this place? I, I don't know. Are you going to search for clues? Yes. Uh, over the next few days, I would like to interrogate the rest of the corpses and try and piece together literally any other information. So, okay, you're going to have to be more specific than that. I am going to attempt to assemble via... Catholics speak with dead as many times as I possibly can. Try and get information together of a chain of command in addition to any kind of other specific orders they were given as to what they would do in regards to their transit back and forth to the living land. Okay, uh, the only thing they were supposed to do was go to the living land, uh, exchange an egg or uh, exchange an artifact. They weren't sure what the artifact was, uh, Sharif was, but uh, uh, that they can tell you. Um, uh, and he was supposed to take the the egg back to the living land, or uh, to, to the Nile Empire. Um, and then, uh, and they were supposed to exchange two large crates of guns uh, for the use for use by Gosbog in the living land. That's all you get. But those weapons don't work in there. Chris? Uh, what? What do you want to do over three days? Honestly, I have no idea. Okay. Um, uh, my character will study... Uh, I mean, will we'll search... Very thoroughly. Research everything. We were in a hurry. Okay. And I want to find, and, uh, you know, go go back and do very thorough job this time. Okay. All right. Uh, does anybody want to help Peaches out at all? I will. I'll also let everyone know the information about uh, the exchange going on with the living land and the eggs. Okay. Oh, what, what, what exchange did you find? What did you find? Well, after several days straight of talking to corpses, pause for dramatic effect. And yes, she finds that very disturbing and has left you alone. Uh, yes, I go back into that after that tender moment I thought we shared. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. After, after, right, after that, they were supposed to exchange an egg for some sort of artifact. In addition to that, they were giving some of those goons? No, guns, I think that's how they're pronounced, <laughs> to the Gospog in exchange for certain other favors, I believe. Oh my goodness. Egg. Uh, yes. This thing, maybe. It looks kind of like a football or an egg. Mm -hmm. they did, that does match the description, I believe. Could I get a closer look at this egg, see if I could figure out what's making it tick? Sure. There, well, uh, no I, I All right. Can I perform? If can I perform any kind of? I know this probably isn't going to be magical, but the core books do describe divination tests in order to determine the properties of an item. Yeah. Well, what is it? It's very heavy. Uh, it GM, like can, I, can I try that divination test on it? Sure. Sure. Go right ahead. It looks okay. like it's made of gold. I mean, it is very heavy, right? Oh, uh oh. It's, it's not just made of gold. There are jewels and gems and stuff all around it. Wow. Uh, yeah, you really can't 
you it, you don't know what's going on with this. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let me see what I can read and can't read. Uh, da, 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 da. Can I read this to you guys? Okay. What's up? I wanted to see if I had already read a lot of this to you guys. Okay, yeah, I've read almost all of that to you guys. Um, so, Peaches mm -hmm. wants to search the place over with a fine tooth comb. Who wants to help her? I think I spend most of my time investigating the egg, so if Chris wants to help, that's fine. Sure, I'll help. Okay. Yeah, actually, because you're better at it than I am. Okay, so you spend a lot of time searching around, and um, and you find uh, eventually, probably about twelve hours when when the clock is at about twelve hours, counting down, you find a journal. Hmm. Okay, and here are the various pages. I'm going to have to open this up and edit it and, and show it to you guys and everything like that. Um, and you know that page that I could read? I'll go back and see if I can find any similar or familiar words and see if I can't uh, translate it later. Right. Well, actually, the journal that you find is in English. Yeah, what about that one page that I couldn't read? What one page you couldn't read? What do you mean? Didn't I find something with Egyptian on it? Uh, yes, but I don't, I don't remember what it was. It wasn't anything important. Okay. <laughs> Save changes. Show to players. Okay. Third one. So I'm showing a bunch of stuff to you guys. I don't know if you're seeing it or not. I sure hope you are. Um, oh, yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, the pages are numbered, so they are in order. Okay. So. And show to players. Okay. So all of those are out. There's uh, five pages. Okay. That you can look at. And if you need me to, I can read them to you. Okay. Is that a yes you need it read to you, or...? <laughs> I think I can be... I'm reading. Yeah. No, I'm... Okay. All right. Pharaoh has given me an important assignment. I am to arrange for a transport plane to fly him to a point in the Indian Ocean near Christmas Island within the next two weeks. I have determined it has something to do with a device he and the gunman constructed together. What I wouldn't give to see the device for myself. Thus, I shall be ever vigilant to take care of my pharaoh's needs and perhaps he will bring me with him. Work proceeds on Marlin's new digging device. Threat of his daughter's safety has made him very cooperative indeed. May. The digging device is complete, and Pharaoh is pleased. I made enough of pretense to convince him, hopefully, of his need of me with this power plant, as he calls it. And as such, I prepare to journey with my Pharaoh. Preparations for the... Okay, June. That was May. This is June. Preparations for the journey offshore from Christmas Island are complete. The PBY seaplane is ready, and the pilot will get the coordinates and file the flight plan from the pharaoh's minister anytime now. He tells me he will not have enough fuel, so I have therefore ordered a tender to leave immediately. We will contact the vessel and refuel, preferably on arrival, so we will have full tanks on the return trip. I have witnessed stormers dying, laughing over their carcass, as the last of their possibility energy is ripped from them and they revert to orcs, I have seen two who have died of no wounds 
only because on returning to their ordinary, ordinary state, the stress was too much for them to handle. Such miraculous power. This is to be good, as it means a shorter war and my return to Terra sooner. I wonder if this has to do with Pharaoh's device in the ocean. Uh-oh. Weren't we supposed to be looking for something like that? Just saying. Still June. Menotep brought new orders from the wireless this morning. Herr Dr. Marlin and I will be taking a trip to Ka's Realm in the eastern United States. I am to take several crates of firearms to a small tribe of his red jaws. There, in a cave with some manner of highly ornate egg, and researching this egg, I have found out it is called a Fabergé egg, an object of extraordinary value, as it is made from silver, gold, and jewels of all sorts. History for this artifact stretches back to this Earth's 1885, given as a gift from Tsar Alexander III to his empress, Maria Fedorovna. Fed Fedorovna. Fedorovna, yes. I'm concerned with my pharaoh's command as this egg. Uh oh. As this egg holds no strategic, scientific, or eternium based properties, possibly necessary to the completion of our mission. However, I will obey my pharaoh. I will ask for more information when we return to the empire, and surely he will share it with me. I am, after all, very important to our cause, and he and I have fought side by side on several battlefields already. I also do not see the benefit in trading arms to the Adinos, as they will not use them. Perhaps these are for their gospod, since those evil creatures have no compunction concerning life nor death, only doing what their master, Ka, tells them. I do not trust the lizards, especially their leader, as they have revealed their treachery on more than one occasion. As well, though, I have no fear of traveling anywhere. The Tsar of the Adinos swore to my master that, should I ever place my foot in his realm again, he will have my head. Nonetheless, Dr. Marlin and I leave for the U.S. immediately. Last page. June. I've further business upon our return to Al Confunda. It remains difficult for me to keep my plans from anyone, but I know I must. Lest my lieutenant decide he may do better than I in this task. A storm knight has been captured. An attack on the base, whom I believe to be a small cell of mystery men, met at the bodies of one rocket ranger and an electricity welder, as well as one more. This one is skilled, but not skilled enough. I will break him upon my return strip him of his power, his dignity, his knowledge of the mystery men, and then I will wash the floor with his life's blood. Shesmu will be pleased with my sacrifice. Of this, I am certain. The remainder of the professor's journal chronicles, the three days to get through the Earth's mantle and to the Eastern living land. His nervousness, despite his apparent bravado, comes through in his writing, as he has been to the living land on only two occasions in previous campaigns and... Frankly, he does not know what to expect, especially since rumblings of discontent among the various Adinos tribes have begun to surface in the past three months. Further ramblings and praise about the workings of the weird science digging device and complaints about things Sheriff would have done differently and the tight accommodations on board, as well as obvious creepy daydreams about the young but apparently extraordinary beautiful, at least in Sheriff's imagination, Hildegard Marlin, finish out the final entry in this man's journal. Okay, he's creepy. Which was just written yesterday. Well done. Um, the date on that journal entry, you notice, is yesterday. So they are responsible for the malady you may or may not have mentioned. Oh, yeah, you definitely mentioned that. I was affected by it. <laughs> yes, we've all been affected by this this thing. We have got to get out to the Christmas Islands or wherever this 
rendezvous is taking place. Well, we're on our way there, apparently. Well, let's see where we end up. Uh, if it's several days, by the way, I would like to cast to make another zombie. Of course you would. <laughs> okay, let's go roll well, that. Would be kind of gamey at this point? Eh. Well, as long as they've got most of their food uh -oh. on them, they're supposed to be pretty good. Oh, boy. Okay, wait a second. Is create zombie within living land axioms? It's magic 19. It doesn't matter. This is going to be a one case. Okay, create zombie. Uh, actually... Oh, oh, uh-oh. That orb breaks. Damn it. Yep. The orb breaks. And let's see, you've got create zombie... That's magic 19, uh, and they only have a magic 14, so that's actually a 4 case. Uh, so, yeah, you you not only, uh, you, you disconnect, the orb breaks, and uh, there's no way to save from it. Um, Isn't this only a 1 case disconnect since it still fits my axioms? It, uh, yes. Okay. So, but I would like to play this seems... reconnect card I conveniently have. Well, hang on a second. Hang on a second. Okay. Okay. Understand how, how this works, okay? If the, okay? If the tool that you're using, which is an ability or a, a tool or a weapon or whatever, exceeds the axiom, that's considered a one case. If your axiom level for magic also exceeds the axiom level of the realm, that is a four case. So this would be a one work? case for you. So re regardless, you've got you've got a one case. So okay. Yeah, you're 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 post hostios. If you rolled a one through four, you would disconnect. But since okay. you're in this half, it's it's not only your your uh, what is that globe? It shatters. Um, yeah. Uh, I forgot. Did you take the damage from that once that shatters. Uh, no, it absorbs the, the shock, but then it breaks. Okay. So, yeah, that's... that's uh, I already took it off my sheet, don't worry. Yeah, and the zombie, uh, the, the one uh, character that you could possibly really still work with is, is pretty much dead. Now, wait a minute. Hold on. You've got the sergeant. Uh, let me get back to the... I just got to close your sheet here. Two, yeah, you basically only got two, uh, two guys that you could deal with. So you've got a second shot at it if you want it. Uh, All right. To reconnect. So you use the card to reconnect. Yep. And there's that. Well, if I can try again, I'd like to do that. Well, you probably got enough time. Okay, I'll give it a shot. Hey, GM, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I was just wondering, because you uh, you weren't answering me. <laughs> um, uh, uh, the Living Land's magic axiom is a one. We're not in the Living Land. We're in a Nile hard point. Right. Ah, uh, okay, never mind. And, and his, <laughs> his character actually is a convert over to Isle anyway. Right, right, right. Okay, yeah. all right. And, and yeah, you're in an aisle hard point, so it's it's kind of wishy washy here. Yeah, this yeah, is much better. Is, that the magic is, it doesn't cause a contradiction in Nile. Um, yeah, actually it does, um, because the Nile Empire's magic axiom is only fourteen, and the magic axiom of the create zombie, I believe, nineteen is a nineteen. <laughs> Now, oh, yeah, that's quite large. You're right. Then, You're right. Uh, and then Thuban's magic axiom is actually a 24, and that's that's well over the 14, so that's a 4 case. So, mm -hmm. yeah, so it, th this is a tough thing. So, hang on just a minute. Uh, what am I doing? Uh, nope, that's the right one. I must have put it on map and background. Yep. I put it on map and background. Layer, token layer. Let me get back to the second. Layer. 
the second casting worked at least. Yeah. See, I didn't get rid of the character sheet on purpose. Yeah. Okay. Because I I knew you would be trying that sick thing again. <laughs> it's a major aspect of the character. Yeah. Yeah. The orb was. Uh, no, not the orb. That was always going to be temporary. <laughs> the making minions aspect is. All right. So you got your zombie back. Okay. I, I'm I'm not very big on on players playing you know more or less evil characters. So uh, he's to... not evil. He's not super evil. Not super evil. No. There are gradients. <laughs> I understand. Yeah. Um, anyway. So. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so that takes care of that. That is, let's see. I didn't read everything about this uh, this place. I'm not. Do you guys want me to read the rest of it? Eh, fine. Honestly, I think it's about time we start wrapping things up. Yeah. Yeah, it seems really like this is an end of act. I, I mean, yeah, it's the end of the act. So let's get things cleaned up. Um. So. <sighs> Penny or Pieces? Yes. I want you to add a possibility to your character for the romance card that never got used. Okay, thank you. Um, I also have a romance card. Well, yeah, but you didn't play it. We're, we're about to get rid of cards. Um, she actually played it, and there was nothing I could do about adding a romance anywhere. So, yeah, you couldn't romance the Gospog. Yeah, or, or really, the, uh, there was nothing to romance here. So the Boraka. Well, all the uh, and we killed all of the NPCs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, everything got kind of dead, like quickly. Um. So, all right. Let me get this thing back up here. Uh, so I, I couldn't even romance one into turning traitor and helping us. <laughs> correct. Uh, it was it was because of the series of events that actually happened, instead of the series of events that I was expecting. <laughs> there there was nothing to be done about any of it, honestly. Okay. okay so um, well, everybody... there's a reason why you know no plan survives actual contact. Okay. Actually, the first time I I ran this adventure, it ran like clockwork. It really did. <laughs> um, yeah, but you did with a bunch of loonies like us. We are at the end of a scene and the end of an act. So uh, all players, go ahead and turn in um, all of your cards except for your hand pool separators. Okay. All right. Cosm so cards. Up on the desk. Huh? Cosm cards, too? Cosm cards, too, yeah. Because everybody gets new Cosm cards and everything. Oh, well. It would have been nice to have the inevitable return, but there you go. Well, you never know. You may get something else better. So, if Mo doesn't want the, if Mo's player doesn't want the character coming back, there's not much you could do to stop that. Well, no, that, that's true. But Mo and I have been working pretty diligently uh, to get his character to a point where uh, I think that he'll enjoy it a lot, a lot more than he has. What do you think, Mo? I think so. I think we did we did a wonderful job, and, and I'll get to I'll get to make my entrance next week. So uh, yeah, okay. that, that'll not, be cool. It's not Mo wearing a mustache, is it? <laughs> no, no, for God's sakes. <laughs> well, that was pretty funny, though. Oh, he would need is a mask, and we wouldn't be able to recognize him. Huh. Okay, now next. Um, uh, if you have less than three possibilities, go ahead and return to three possibilities. If Even you with the draining stuff? Keep them. What? Even with the possibility draining thing happening? Yes. Okay. Yes, it's the end yeah. of the act. This is how the rules work. Yeah. Okay. So we did we were, were, yeah. Thankfully. If you were uh, actually, yeah, Penny uh, gets four back because of Prodigy, I think it is. Yes. Yes. Okay. 
Okay. My, so, my per- but if you have, if you already have three or more, or for penny four or more, that's where you're at. But if you have more than three or four for penny, um, uh, then you keep those. I do not have the rules where your possibilities are automatically lost. That just doesn't make any sense to me. Agreed. Uh, Let's see. All characters uh, who participated in the act gain five experience points. And then, Mo, you started out participating. I'm going to leave it up to to, uh, Ginger and Connor whether you should get five XP for Mo or not. Because you, all of us now know that Mo is not dead. Okay. What? What? I thought he was. Oh, Mo, old Mo is dead. Now is he reincarnated into a new body or something? Nope. Not reincarnated. Okay, let's see. Uh, what are we looking at here? Oh, it's... Did he transform to Nile Axioms or something? Ding. And that's what the one was uh, about. I thought so. I thought so. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but, but it just it just kills the reveal. Well, <laughs> no, no, it won't. That reveal is still going to be cool, dude. In care, it's just out of character. We figured it out. Yeah, out of character. Exactly. Yeah. So let's see. Uh, what do you think? Should uh, should Mo get that extra five? I think he should. He did stuff in the beginning of the story. Yes, and he did with Grace and Valor. Okay. And he's sitting here, and, and and he he here all night, you know. And a big old foot stomping on him. That is true. He got he sat here all night, very with the patience of a saint. Yeah, he, well, I don't know about the saint part, but <laughs> um, the patience of a hero. Okay, so yeah, uh, so Mo gets that extra five, and, and we're talking about the new Mo. Same as the old Mo. Oh, it's better, bigger, stronger, faster, better. Come on now. Okay, so uh, that would that would have been if I got transformed to Cyber Papacy and wound up all cyborg. No. Oh no. Okay, so all characters regain all shock. Uh, it's been three days, so you're able to recover wounds and uh, and and anything like that. Uh, old Cosm cards are turned in. Uh, and players can spend their available experience points if you desire. Did we get extra I, XP for this? No. You had no, one no. extra XP for Egyptian, and that was it. And Thank I you. I, that, that, that was useful. I think I will be spending XP on skill ads, like getting uh, Reality 3 and maybe some other stuff. Yeah, I, I spent all my XP down last time. <laughs> okay. So, did we get any XP for this game, this part? Um, for the act? Yeah, I already said 5 XP. I, I, I must have... I, I didn't write it down, so it slipped my mind. So you had uh, you had 81, I think it was. Uh, I have 82. Plus two, and then another 5. So you should have, I believe it's 87 now. I'm behind a lot! Oh no! So yeah, Penny should have uh, 87. And then the rest of you just get a bonus of 5. That puts me at 70 total. Okay. Alright, don't worry, you'll catch up. Trust me, we've we've had... uh, Sakal actually caught up very nicely. He was 15... 15 behind, and he caught up over, like, two adventures. Okay. So, I, I, I prefer to award folks based on their their role play. I'll, I'll do the basic five experience, and then I'll do possibilities on top of that. And at the end of the adventure, you can spend up to three possibilities um, for, to, you can exchange that for up to nine experience points. So it's three experience points per possibility. Right, if you're overloaded. Yeah. Okay, and next week we will uh, begin Act 2. Yay! Okay. 
Okay. Okay. And and hopefully we'll be able to carry it through uh, very nicely. All right, I wanted to take a minute. Um, it is the 21st of April, 2021, and I realized the what you've best just been listening to was from July 25th of uh, 2020. I wanted to take a minute to address something that uh, uh, I, I thought might be disturbing to some folks out there, and it was my attitude uh, towards uh, Thuban, Josh's character. Now, before I go any further, I, I just want you to understand, especially Josh, if you're listening, uh, Josh is an amazing role player. He's he's a wonderful person. He's very respectful, and I would love to have him come and play the game with me again. But for one thing, actually two things, I, I don't like, and I'm going to address these individually, but I don't like when folks play decidedly evil characters. A character is evil if they have anything to do with the undead, uh, necromancy, uh, or, or, you know, anything really truly nasty like that. Um, and the other thing is, is Munchkin characters. Um, I guess these can kind of be addressed together. Um, I, I, Thuban is the very first character I've had in more than 30 years of role-playing, uh, 23 to almost 24 years of running games, over two decades worth of running games, um, that has ever played a character as decidedly evil as this. Now, Josh himself is a very nice guy. He's, he's very good, but the character that he made was enormously evil. Now, did he mean to make it, or was it just being within the rules? I'm, I'm going to say it was probably because he was allowed to be able to do it within the rules. Torg Eternity and, and Torg role-playing the Possibility Wars before it allowed for players to play basically the type of character that they wanted to play as long as they had the ads for skills and everything like that um, so that they could do it. Um, well, Josh came along and made Thuban at a time when the other players already had, uh, you know, more than 75 experience points. Um, so he was able to make a character that I don't think he was he would normally have made if he had started from the very beginning. Um, and I'm not sure if it was planned to make the character this way or not, but um, he has magic miracles, and I'm sure he has magic and miracles, and I'm sure that if he would, if I would have allowed him to, he would have had psionics as well. Um, but he had several things that uh, allow, allowed Thuban to save versus magic and hits and stuff like that. And I'm sorry, when you've got things like Command Undead, uh, Animate Skeleton, Create Zombie, Speak with Dead, Sudden Burial, things like that, your character is designed around the exploration of evil I in the role-playing game. Now, players oftentimes will make characters that more or less mirror themselves and then there are other players and I believe this is this is the case um, here it, they'll make a character that is a really cool concept on 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 their paper but when they get it to the GM it turns out to be a freaking nightmare okay now like I said I've been running games for over two decades I pride myself on being able to take pretty much any situation, any player, any character that you throw my way, and and make them uh, gel within the game. Now, Josh, extraordinary player, was gelling in the game without fail, no problem whatsoever. Everybody likes him. Um, we all of us would love to have him back, but not the character, Thuban is a decidedly evil character. If if you have this many things that, that if if in the 
character's history, they have this many things that they are chasing, and they are trying to to figure out things about evil, whether it is to to allow themselves to to do evil uh, without actually turning evil themselves, or to um, you know break through on the evil barrier. Uh, you know, it, it, there's, there's all kinds of things that could happen here and all kinds of things that Josh very well may have meant to make into this character. And I have to admit, this is a, a lovely character, but he's also exceptionally powerful. And if this character had started at the very beginning of the game, would not be the way that, that this character is because different situations within the game would have more or less pushed Josh to think about how to uh, build a, a, a character in a different fashion, he, and he would have come out to be a, a better character. I love the idea of playing a Stallinger from the Living Land as a, a Magister from Isle. And and I believe Josh, when he tells me that his backstory is has nothing to do with evil, I have no qualms about believing that whatsoever. But the character is decidedly evil. The character is also a Munchkin character. This is, and and again, the mathematics were on Josh's side for this. But also, I've never had to plan a way to thwart an individual's player character to such an extent that the player can no longer really play them. Okay. Uh, again, magic, miracles, has an heirloom, instinctive magic, um, has some really nice stats, has, has the absolute minimum stats, um, a Stallinger doesn't need high charisma, uh, unless they've got skills and charisma, and Thuban did not, uh, dexterity, he didn't need, need a high dexterity because he has the storm breaking, medium shield, um, which dances and has spell deflection, um, but the mind and the spirit, being 11 and 10 respectively brilliant genius i love it i i wish we could continue with it and then a strength of eight uh of course he doesn't really need that much of a strength because uh well magic and miracles um but the i think the character i think the character might have worked with less graphic um spells and and uh, miracles to work with. You know, when you're creating a zombie or animating a skeleton or something like that, those are situations that might seem cool to a lot of people, but they don't fit with every group. And with our group, they didn't really fit from this character. So anyway, I, I just wanted to, to state that um, it, it's not that we're prudes. It's not that we're anti... Not that we're anti-whatever, okay? But the fact of the matter is this this character would not work in our group anymore. Okay, no, no more characters of evil intent or anything like that. But Josh, if, if, uh, if you want to come back and you would like to play, let's make you another character that is not uh, uh, such a nasty character, such a munchkin character. And, and we'll, you know, I would love to have you back in the game. You're, you're intelligent, well-spoken, everybody likes you, and, and I think that's the way it ought to be. So, anyway, I thought that I'd better clarify some of that um, as, as we were going along, and uh, I'm going to go ahead and shut it down now and get this all put together and load it up. Good day, y'all.